how's it going? Today is gonna be uh, full of some gardening chores. I'm gonna be buttoning up a few things because it's supposed to freeze tomorrow night for the first time, which it's a little bit earlier than it normally does. In fact, it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow, which is so glorious. We're all looking forward to it. It does not rain very often here. Uh, it's beautiful and sunny today with a high of 68, so it's a great day to be out here working. I can wear a sweatshirt and be super comfortable. So I want to make sure that my greenhouse is prepared. Right now, the sides are uh, still rolled up, so I'm gonna get those buttoned down and then harvest the rest of my produce out of the garden. I probably won't pull a bunch of plants yet because it's going to probably be a really light frost so it won't take plants unless some of the coleus and potato vines it might take out in my other part of my garden but vegetables can usually take a little bit of frost um, so I'll let them stay and then if there's any like green tomatoes out there um, hopefully they'll have a chance maybe to ripen if it turns a little bit warmer. So anyway, I'm in the greenhouse now. Let me show you what I have to do. So you can see my tables are pretty light. I don't have very much left in here, which is great. I have a few shrubs I just got that I'm super excited to get in the ground. These are some Bobo hydrangeas. I'm actually taking two out to my parents' house because um, if you guys remember seeing that video, we planted a little hedge out there. Uh, but they had spider mites really bad this year. Their whole garden did. Um, so two of them got defoliated and I think they're, I don't know, I'm just gonna replace them. Um, so I'm looking forward to that and then putting a few in my own garden. But you can see straight out the greenhouse on both sides. Let me go out there. So this is what we do when it starts getting warmer in the spring. We take the greenhouse plastic which usually is clamped into these like U-channels right here with some springs and then we roll the plastic up and tie it along the way there. It keeps it nice and clean and then it also helps with airflow and keeps it a lot cooler in the greenhouse. But now I'm concerned with trapping heat rather than letting it escape. So we're gonna take care of that on that side and on the other side. I think I still need to do a little bit of watering today. It's not, oh, there's another kitty. Do you see him? That's a new one that just started showing up. Hi kitty. I don't really want to become the cat lady of the neighborhood, but it just hurts my heart to have cats come around and not to like feed them or anything. So we just have that one and no that still comes around. Um, and then of course Russell's in and out and Russell actually sleeps with me at night. Uh, anyway, I gotta come into the barn and get the springs for the greenhouse plastic. And they are up in the loft, I think. Yep, there they are. All right, I got them all untangled. So this is what the um, springs look like that go inside the U-channels. I have eight eight-foot length sections and I use four on either side on the bottom. And then I've got four little pieces, like two feet long, that I use on the verticals and I'll show you that. But the first thing I've got to do is get the plastic untied and rolled down. So here is the U-channel right here. So what I do is I hold that plastic really tight and then I start weaving this spring in and out in that U-channel and it holds everything in, kind of like that. First side is done. Benjamin just got up from his nap, so Aaron brought him out here to say hi. Hi, baby. Look at those jammies. Look at how cute you are. I love you. Oh, I wanna be in love with you. I wanna be in love with you. I wanna see you getting through. That's what the Lord said to me. I wanna take you by the hand. Try to make you understand. They're serious nothing better than cuddling up your baby. I get so distracted. Back to the task at hand. I do have the area all cleaned up and ready to work on the plastic. Doesn't that look nice and tidy? I love it. probably be leaving the back and the front door open even though it's gonna freeze because it's not gonna get that cold and the cover will help keep any frost off of anything I've got in here and I will keep the fan running in fact I'm gonna move the fan into the middle it just kind of helps facilitate air 
flow it kind of pulls air from outside and then blows it through i'd say that this is the number one purchase we've made since moving into the house like the best thing that we could have added to the property because it helps out so much with the type of projects that we do in fact aaron's actually looking into maybe getting some sort of heater um, as well as some lights out here uh, so it can kind of prolong our use of it we still use it even in the middle of winter like last year i grew spinach in here and i had beets and carrots and that worked out just great but it would be nice to be able to just flip a heater on and come out here and work for a little while and if it gets really cold like sub-zero we can turn it on and it'll help the plants that are in here so now I'm gonna start harvesting. So I'm gonna go put my tools away that I was using out here and then grab a trailer and head toward the vegetable garden. Ooh, it is bright. So this is the trailer I'm gonna be using to harvest. You can see I already have a few things in here. These were from the other day when I removed the squash vines when the grass was being lifted. So these are buttercup squash and I got 35 of these off of one vine. Isn't that incredible? They're amazing and they're really good to eat. So I will be storing those. I got 15 acorn squash. I got a whole bunch of these. In fact, I have a bunch of these already worked into some decorating projects. I just had a few left on the vine. There's a Cinderella pumpkin that actually wasn't quite ripe when I had to pull the vine, but it's still very pretty. And then I grabbed a few other buckets so I could put like tomatoes in one and peppers in another. So I'm just gonna wheel this over to the garden space and start picking. Look at those beautiful hollow pride peppers. There are 55 of them and still a few left on the vine that aren't ready to pick. So hopefully the frost doesn't take them. So here's where we're at. All of this came from just this veggie garden space right here. We've got two crimson sweet watermelons here and here, and I still have three more out there. We've got three cantaloupe, which slipped the vine today, so they're perfectly ripe. Seven honeydew melon. We've got some summer crookneck squash, two nice zucchini, one butternut, and I have more butternuts coming. We got uh, I can't even remember how many jalapenos, like 50 something, and then several serranos, probably like eight. One corsel pepper, those are the tomatoes there. There are some slicers down toward the bottom of that bowl. Sweet bananas that are really, really ripe, but they're still good to use. And mini bell peppers, a bunch of bell peppers, like big green ones. There's some corsels, and these are wonderful really wonderful mild peppers and there's a whole bunch in there uh, what else and then everything else i already told you about the pumpkins and squash so the only thing i have left today is to harvest the tomatoes that are right over there so i think that's a pretty amazing harvest especially given the fact that i've been harvesting food out of this garden space all season long and we've had multiple crops in every single of the, one of these raised beds um so since about like in March, I was already cutting greens out of there. So from March until probably, I mean, unless we get some really deep freezes, I'll probably be harvesting other things out of this space until sometime in November. That's an amazing amount of the year. Now I haven't done as much preserving as I have done in the past. Um, when we lived in our older house uh, that was a lot smaller and we had a lot smaller garden, I had a lot, and we didn't have a baby at that point. I had a lot more time. So I did a ton of canning and I really enjoyed that. I haven't found um, a lot of time <laughs> at this point in my life to do that. I actually still have a box of apples sitting on our counter that I need to make into applesauce. But I hope as time goes on, I can kind of carve out a little more time and do some of those things again. But I am gonna be storing the pumpkins and squash downstairs in our basement and I'll show you that in another video. I kind of want to talk about like how I store all of my stuff, potatoes and onions, garlic, that sort of thing. So I still have three other tomato plants that are planted over this direction and we're gonna go pick those real quick. You guys, all of those are from one tomato plant. This one plant right here that still has a ton of fruit on them. Look at that. That is nuts. So this is called a garden gem. This one's from Proven Winners and will be available next year definitely pick that one up super productive so now i've got two more tomato plants i've got a green zebra right here which has these beautiful green heirloom tomatoes and then i've got a garden treasure 
which looks like it's got a bunch of beautiful slicers. So there's all the tomatoes. These are garden treasures, which are a nice slicer type tomato, uh, garden gems. And then there were not any green zebras that were all the way right, but these are getting closer. And I thought I would just set them on my counter and let them ripen. That way I don't miss out on these. So Aaron and I decided to take a bunch of this produce down to the food bank. There's no way we could eat all of it ourselves. And this is part of Gardner's Supply Garden to Give, which is a movement started this year. We did a video about it earlier this spring, and it's just encouraging everybody to grow extra produce so that you can share it with other people who either don't have access to fresh organic vegetables or they can't afford it or whatever the circumstance may be. Um, so I kind of picked through all the stuff I picked out of the garden today to make sure everything has a fairly decent shelf life. Like I saved the tomatoes for us that either need to be eaten today or tomorrow um, because I'm not sure how long it takes to distribute. So anyway, let me show you all the stuff we're taking. I think it's a pretty good load. I'm excited to take it down there and I'm excited that somebody will be able to use it and eat it. You ready? Yeah. Aaron, I'm proud of my produce. I think it's pretty. Awesome. Pretty colors. And even though that watermelon looks like it's been scratched to within an inch of its life, I don't want to blame Russell, but I don't know. I think it's gonna be a good one. So we're here at the food bank. Here's the produce. We're just gonna take it in and drop it off. We just got all the produce dropped off. And the cool thing about the Garden to Give is that they're not encouraging everyone to just like grow a ton of extra stuff. Like if you have the time and the space and you want to do that, that's awesome. But what they're encouraging you to do is that if you have excess or if you have a little bit of extra space, just grow a little bit and just take a little bit down because every little bit helps. Um, so like I've been able to keep up with our garden and our produce for the most part, except for our zucchini, pretty much through the whole season until now. And it seems like all of a sudden we had a ton of produce. And so I thought it was a great time to take it down. Um, also Gardener Supply has like pre-done, what do you call them? Like, garden plans mm -hmm. yeah so you can get on their website and type in garden to give and then they'll um, show you like some pre-made like raised bed garden plans like um, that are designed to have everything that you plant in there ripen at the same time so if you just want to make one big trip down to the food bank then you can like dedicate a little bit of space to growing some things that will like pretty much be ready to go at the same time and that way you don't feel like you have to be making trip after trip after trip with just a little amount of stuff so anyway we're gonna head back home I have one more thing I want to get done before I start my regular kind of like watering chores this afternoon it actually got warmer than 68 degrees I think what is it 67 <laughs> are you serious yeah, it's not that warm. oh my word maybe it's just because I've been outside like working oh the truck says 69 oh well that <laughs> Either way, not too yeah. far off. Yeah, so I'm gonna go home and make a little bouquet out of the zinnias that are in the garden space because my sister's in town and she's staying with us for a night. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to put a little fresh bouquet in her room. So we'll do that and then I have to start my regular chores. All right, back home. So I'm gonna run out here and pick a few of these zinnias. They're looking so pretty right now. Don't those look so pretty? So bright and fallish. So I'm gonna pick a few of these and I do think I wanna make the arrangement look pretty fall. So I'm gonna probably steer clear of the bright pinks. That one is perfect. So here's what I picked. First of all, I have this little vase right here. I did put a little piece of floral foam just because I had a little piece left over from another project. Um, I picked a few Play in the Blue Salvia. These are wonderful. I have five stems of that. I have five stems of this Penicetum. This is Desert Plains. I thought that looked very fallish. Got these gorgeous zinnias and I chose all colors that kind of fit in the fall theme. And these pinks are kind of more on the coral warm side. So I think those are all real great together. I've got some tomatoes that really with the freeze coming don't have much of a chance of ripening so I'll use those coming out the sides of the vase and then I also picked a couple of stems of the tangerine slice appeal black-eyed Susan vine look at that look how deep that one is they're all so beautiful I thought that would be really pretty kind of like coming out maybe twisting around the base of the vase 
So now I'm gonna go try to track down a tripod so I can set it up and hopefully you guys can see this come together. So there it is, I think it turned out really pretty and so fallish. I love the tomatoes spilling out the side of the container as well as the Black Eyed Susan vines and I was able to kind of like work them in to where they came up and just kind of I just tucked them in here and there. Um, the only thing I went and grabbed after I got started was two more zinnias because I didn't have quite enough. I got that little stripy one right there and then another coral colored one because it kind of had a hole in there I needed to kind of fill it in with something. So. I think it turned out really sweet. And floral arranging, you guys, is not like something <laughs> that I uh, profess to be a professional at. I just have really fun doing it. I would love to go to some kind of uh, floral workshop. I follow so many florists on Instagram and get so inspired. I have a lot to learn though. So I'm gonna go set this in the bedroom where my sister's gonna be staying tonight. Oh, and you must always put a few little fruit right at the base of the vase because I think that makes it look extra sweet. Put those in my pocket. <laughs> okay, I think it looks really sweet in here, Russell. <laughs> I already had the pumpkins in here as well as a stack of autumn magazines, which I think is really fun. These are all Victoria magazines, which I love. Um, past seven years of the September, October issues. So that's kind of a fun thing that my mom did when we were growing up. It was tradition um, to go every single month or every season and swap out the magazine. So she had a subscription to Victoria. So she's got Victoria magazines dating back into the 80s. So now we can go in there and every, like right now, I could go pull September, October issues for all of those years, like 20 years of magazines or what is it now 30 years of magazines and you can take a look back and get like so much inspiration and see how the styles kind of went throughout the years it's just a really fun tradition that i wanted to start so i've got i think maybe seven years worth going right now um maybe a little bit more than that i have to go look through my stacks you know monica's gonna watch this i know that you were laying on her bed so that is pretty much it for this video, you guys. I've got a bunch of other stuff I've gotta go get done. I need to go water most everything today because I skipped it yesterday, except for a couple of things that are babies. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, but in Eastern Oregon, that might mean it sprinkles for five minutes. It might mean we get a ton. I have no idea, but I wanna make sure that everything is uh, just like prepared going into tomorrow because we have another busy day planned. So it feels good to button stuff up though and kind of move into a new season, even though it makes me a little sad to be leaving summer and fall, kind of heading into winter, not really knowing what winter's gonna be like. I always welcome it a little bit because it's a time of like quiet and rest a little bit more. Um, it's a time to kind of regroup and I need that. I honestly, like as much as it would be nice to live in a mild, more mild climate, I don't know that I would do super well in it, like having a garden all the time, all year round, because I don't think I would ever have a chance to have a break and to feel like, like I don't have something that's pulling me, like I need to attend to so many different things. So anyway, I am looking forward to like a little bit deeper into fall and going into winter. I will probably not be singing that same tune come December just the way it goes. I'll be looking forward to gardening season again. But anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. How long has my face been dirty? Hopefully not for the whole video. <laughs> Jeez. I'll get done with the video and like I'll notice a great big smudge here or like a smudge right here. Or I've kind of like done one of these numbers and I'll have like a dirt mustache. You know, it comes with the territory.